Good day, everyone. Medication of the day is alanglide sodium. This medicine is a bisphosphonate that inhibits osteoclast mediated bone desorption. Its labeled uses include treatment and prophylaxis of postmenopausal osteoporosis, corticosteroid induced osteoporosis, Hadrick's disease, osteoporosis in men, and it also holds an orphan drug status for bone manifestations of cautious disease. Side effects, precautions, contraindications, and drug interactions are plentiful, so beware during a prescription audit or screening process. Today, we shall be looking at the most important counseling points to discuss with the patient when you encounter them for the new or a refill prescription for alanglate sodium. Starting with administration, how to take. Advise the patient to take alanglate sodium only upon rising for the day. Don't Take at that time or before arising for a day. Take at least 30 minutes before first food or beverage or any other medication for the day. And also advise them to make sure to not lie down for at least 30 minutes after the dose and until the patient has had their food. Do not chew, swallow, or suck on the tablet or effervescent tablet. If the patient is advised effervescent tablet, make sure to instruct them on proper technique for the solution of the effervescent tablet. Firstly, advise them to dissolve in at least 30 milliliters room temperature plain water and advise against use of mineral or flavored water. And they have to wait for at least five minutes after the effervescence has stopped. Stir for about 10 seconds and then ingest a glass of water containing the medicine. In case they are prescribed oral tablets, advise them to take the tablet with a full glass of water while in the upright position. And if at all they are prescribed oral solution, they will have to take the solution with at least 100 milliliters of water while in the upright position. Food relevant. Uh, administration point that we need to highlight to the patients is for those on sodium restricted diet. If such patients are advised a certain tablet, we have to make sure to highlight the sodium content per tablet so that they can make the necessary changes to their diet. Moving on. Uh, to missed doses. As we know, alendronate is administered once weekly. So what, uh, what should the patient be doing if they forget to take the dose of the week? Ask them to take it next morning, once remembered, and then return to the original dosing schedule. Suppose our patient takes the tablet every Sunday and has forgotten this week's dose until Friday. In this case, instruct the patient to take the following morning, which will be a Saturday, and then return to the original schedule, meaning they'll have to continue uh, every Sunday for the upcoming weeks. The second point to be noted here is the fact that no two doses should be taken on the same day. Suppose the same patient that we have discussed earlier has forgotten this week's dose until Saturday. In this case, the following morning will be a Sunday, and Sunday also happens to be uh, the day for weekly administration of alendronate. In this case, it, it becomes that the patient has to take the previous week's dose as well as the following week's dose on the Sunday. In this case, make sure to clearly instruct the patient to refrain from doubling. Take only one dose and move ahead. Take only one dose on the Sunday and continue taking the next doses in the upcoming Sundays. They will not be doubling the dose. That is important to highlight to them with regards to missed doses. And coming uh, to side effects, as we have already discussed, this medicine comes with side effects in plenty. And it is prudent to inform regarding the alarming ones and when to seek help immediately. So advise patients to report symptoms of esophageal diseases. 
symptoms of esophageal diseases, what are they? It will include any abdominal pain, chest pain, back pain, heart pain, chronic cough, hoarseness in voice, wheezing, difficulty swallowing, indigestion or a burning feeling in the stomach, uh, feeling that food is stuck in the throat. All these are symptoms of esophageal diseases to look out for. And uh, if at all any of these symptoms is experienced by a patient taking an antinate sodium, they will have to be instructed to immediately report these symptoms to their treating physician. The second point is talking about uh, one patient to report musculoskeletal pain, osteonecrosis of the jaw, or symptoms of atypical or subprochanthoric or diaphysic humeral fractures. Sounds a mouthful, right? Let's break it up. First, let's talk about osteonecrosis of the jaw. Osteonecrosis is a benign condition and it is characterized by necrotic exposed bone. And when it happens in the jaw, early symptoms to watch out for will include any pain or swelling in the mouth, numbness or feeling heaviness in the jaw, any discharge of pus, poor healing or infection of gums, loosening of teeth or any exposed bone in the mouth. These are early symptoms of osteonecrosis of jaw that the patient on alendronate sodium should be instructed to immediately report to their treating physician. Moving on to symptoms of atypical subprochanthoric. Subprochanthoric, what is it? It is this region below the cubicle or the small rounded joint where femur or the thigh bone, it connects to the hip bone. That is subprochanthoric. What about diaphyseal femur? That is the midsection of the femur or the thigh bone itself. Okay, so both of these are talking about a thigh bone. So symptoms to watch out for certainly will be any pain in the thigh after initiation of alendronate sodium. And pain in the thigh with mild trauma or even no trauma at all. In in such cases, we have to immediately, uh, the patient has to immediately report this to the treating physician for uh, further investigations. So this is with regards to the alarming symptoms. Moving on, uh, th these are the most common side effects. Common side effects revolving around the gastrointestinal system will include abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, flatulence, indigestion, vomiting. And apart from the GI side effects, we also have uh, patients who experience headache or even fever and flu-like illness. These are all common side effects that a patient should be aware of. Some of the more serious side effects that they have to watch out for will include heart failure, any esophageal erosions, per, uh, perforations, strictures, ulcerations, or any hypersensitivity reactions. And as we had earlier discussed about the arthralgia, myalgia, bone pain, and osteonecrosis of the jaw, as well as the external auditory canal. External auditory canal osteo osteonecrosis is a rare condition, and this affects the tympanic bone. So what symptoms are you going to look out for? Any chronic ear pain or discharge from the ear or any forms of ear infection that uh, is going to uh, signal towards osteonecrosis of external auditory canal. Moving on, uh, so with such side effects, certainly comes the need for caution. Certain monitoring parameters are prudent while using this medicine. So we need to talk about bone mineral density. Of course, we will be taking uh, one baseline bone mineral dens density testing before initiation of the therapy. But once initiated at six to 12 months of therapy, you will have to repeat the bone mineral density testing. Uh, second point is periodic dental exams. We've already discussed osteonecrosis of the tool and certainly that justifies the need for periodic dental exams. And we also have uh, renal function monitoring, uh, monitoring for the biochemical markers of bone formation or, and resorption. 
as well as for any radiologic evidence of fractures. Yet again, this also we have already discussed about, and that is the reason why we have to look out for radiologic evidence of fractures for any subprochanteric or diaphyseal femoral fractures, which are atypical. And this happens when the patient is on alumbrinate therapy, could possibly happen. These are the monitoring parameters to discuss with the patient, actually the most important ones. And um, that concludes today's video. See you next Saturday. Until then, happy learning. Take care and stay safe.